Okay, so long story short, Minel sent me this bongo cajon, as well as some other stuff, which you'll see in some other videos. The only thing about this, though, is they sent it to me in pieces. Like, like, what am I supposed to do with this? Okay, all jokes aside, this is the Minel Make Your Own Bongo Cajon Kit, and it's exactly that. They send you all the pieces and you put it together, which honestly is a really cool thing that I wish other companies would do. So very often I get asked about projects that don't require a lot of tools, so this one's for you. They also provided me with their tool kit, which has some sanding blocks, glue, strap clamps, and a screwdriver. The only other tools that I used were some regular clamps as well as a razor blade, so let's put this thing together. All right, so the first step is to assemble the body. We have the two long sides and the two short sides, and they just slide together. And these can only go together one way, so you want it so that the ends or the corners line up and there isn't a gap. So you want it to look like this and not like this. Whenever you assemble something that requires glue, it's always a good idea to dry fit it before you glue it, meaning that you put it together without the glue, just to make sure that you have everything right and everything fits nicely. And sure enough, everything fits perfectly, so now we just glue it and clamp it. And no matter what you're doing, judging how much wood glue to use is always a little bit tricky. So if you do have any squeeze out like on this side, all you need to do is take a damp paper towel and wipe it off. It's been a few hours, so the glue is dry now. I removed the clamps, so now the next step is to add the top. And before we glue on the top, we wanna to make sure that the top of the body is nice and clean and flat, so any glue squeeze out or if the pieces don't exactly line up, we wanna take our sanding block and sand it down. This is where we use the strap clamps, and for any glue up, no matter the type of clamps being used, I like to get them ready and set to the right length, just so I'm not wasting any time once the glue is on. And lining up the top is your main priority. It's actually oversized by like a sixteenth of an inch all around, so there will be a slight overhang which we'll take care of once the glue dries, so just do your best to make sure that the overhang is even. If you have all the pieces of the body lined up nicely, you don't need a lot of clamping force. Really, these just hold it in place, but just for some extra safety, I use painter's tape where I didn't have the clamps. Once the top has had some time to dry, we now need to add the divider for the sound chamber, which is what gives the drum its two pitches. This piece looks like it's a square, but it is not, so before you glue it, you want to make sure you have it in the right orientation. This way is incorrect since it sits above the body, and here it is correct since it sits flush. And just like the sides, there is a slot or a dado that the divider slides into. I started to apply the glue using the bottle, but I found it a lot easier to use a little brush and you want to make sure you have enough glue, you know, a decent amount of glue in order to totally isolate the sound chambers, which will give you the best sound. And the divider is such a snug fit, I didn't bother clamping it. Now back to the top, like I mentioned earlier, it is a touch bigger than the body, so the directions say to use the sanding block to trim it flush, but I thought I could use a razor blade to trim most of it, though if you're not comfortable doing this or don't have a razor blade, then by all means use the sanding block. Mm -hmm. 
Now the fun part of sanding, which honestly isn't that fun, it's kind of boring, but trust me, it'll make a world of difference in the look and feel. Finally, the last step is to apply a finish to it, which will help protect the wood and give it a more professional finished look. I moved inside for this just because it's currently November and I do not have heat in my shop and finish can act kind of weird when it's cold out and it takes forever to dry so I brought it into the warmth. I used wipe on polyurethane but you can use whatever you want. You can stain it, you can paint it, if you're artistic you can draw something cool on it. And looking back now, I kind of wish I stained the top a different color than the body, so who knows, maybe next time. I added three coats in total and I sanded in between each coat. And by far my favorite part about doing a project like this is playing it for the first time. And speaking of firsts, this is the first time I've ever played one of these, so my technique could probably use some help, but let me tell you, I had a blast playing this.